themselves sitting just below them in the standings, and you can hear there are some boisterous fans here in the audience. They stopped as soon as I say it, they stopped. Yeah, I've heard that there's a lot of Excel fans that uh, came in today to support Excel. They changed the chance. <laughs> I've been asking this for three weeks, and finally, Finally, we have a different chart. It wasn't very inventive, but I'll take it. So heading into draft, I do want to kind of follow up on the questions that the analyst has posed, particularly around what comfort champion Caps is going to reach for, because we've really only seen him have good looks on things like the Senna. And I'm curious what they'll use their blue side priority pick for. Will it be something like the Aphelios? Will that be taken away from him? Um, and will we see a Soraka ban or a Sona target ban? Uh, how frisky is Wonder feeling after they finally had those tools taken away? That has to be the question. Soraka being commonly banned on the red side, and once again by Excel alongside the Syndra. Ezreal and Rakan, however, the bans from G2 alongside Jarvan. Not bans I am too used to seeing. Rakan can be in their job and sometimes, but Ezreal ban seems very out of the woodwork. This does mean that Aphelios and Orn, one of those champions, will slip through this ban phase. All right, Kavs is probably having Aphelios flashbacks from last week, but not going to be given to him. XL will ban it, so will we see Wanda go back to the Orn, or will we see a first pick AD carry here from G2? Hmm, actually surprising. I thought for sure that with the Aphelios and the Senna kind of gone from the champion pool, like Caps would either reach for something like a Lucian or possibly even go back to the Gragas Yasuo uh, days of old. Well, there are different possibilities. Now with uh, Gragas getting through, you have to expect Kadra to go towards that. The most picked jungler at 20 picks so far this split. And uh, Kadra, a very good early game jungler, very good at setting his team up for success. Team it up alongside a Varus here for Patrick. I think that this uh, does put emphasis on maybe getting Torre his Braum, just because that's usually what they run with this Varus, and it's one of Torre's signature champions, is very fast and furious. The Orn flex pick, as well as the uh, suspected Karthus jungle. Yeah, we have seen Karthus jungle in the past here in the LEC, and uh, we had Ender give a great breakdown on just how powerful it is. Very quick at clearing, very good at leeching all of the XP you can get in the jungle and then having impact in teamfights because of that global ultimate. Okay, I like this set a lot better because it's still technically a flex pick. My concern about the um, Yasuo potential hover is that if this does go into an Orn mid, is that Orn can neutralize a lot of the assassination potential because usually when you have Gragas Yasuo, um, as Feb even put it, you can't look away from your screen because yeah. if you're distracted for a single second and the cask finds you, you can immediately be deleted. Um, but because they don't know where that Orn's going to go, it feels like it'd be too early for Expect to pull the trigger on possibly looking for the Mickey Yasuo. Oh, we have Mickey and Mickey in this game. Yeah, we've got Mickey Oh, Mickey. no. <laughs> Both of them are so fine, just so that you know. There's the <laughs> Yasuo ban from G2, perhaps thinking, of course, the set could go up towards the top lane. Could be a support set we've heard rumbling as of it we saw it in the lck but expectations has to be that expect takes that up into the top lane we'll see what excel decide to ban for their final ban here they got rid of an ad mid laner and they're gonna team it up with another one the kiana their final removal from the pool it does mean that they are kind of pushing themselves into a double AP composition because they're thinning the mid lane champion pool if Mickey doesn't want to play this set of finding in uh, another AD mid. I see that, I see that. I think they're also pushing G2 towards double AP as well because they've got the Karthus jungle. Uh, we'll see, there's the Braun ban that you said perhaps XL would lock in. And uh, now they have their support and we think they're mid laner, but of course, as you said, that flexibility of the set and the flexibility of the Orn means there's still a lot up for grabs. Except, expect Excel to pick support here. Ooh. And your ooze was short-lived. Nautilus is going to be the lock. Man, I'm writing in pen and I started writing Nautilus and then I went to Thresh and I have to go back to that and I crossed it out. Come on, Tore. You can't, you can't write until they lock. That's the rule. I sometimes accidentally write the player's name instead of the champion every now and again. So it's like, oh, they picked Patrick in the bottom lane. To be fair, if you were going to pick two champions that you would trade Torre for, it would be Nautilus and Braum. Yes. I think they're kind of like his signature champs. So obviously reaching back for comfort there, as uh, if that gets locked in, it's an Orn mid. Is it an Orn mid? Or is it an or Orn it support? An <laughs> like, okay, I don't think it's going to be Orn support, although that is a possibility. Really? You but don't think they I, would I, play I, Orn support? I, I think they would. I just don't think it's the best use of Orn in the current meta. You probably want to take him up towards the middle top lane, get as much experience on him as possible. 
And uh, maybe it is. No, okay, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about Don't it. Don't talk about hovers, Matic. Yeah, you said it. You haven't written anything down yet, Fosk, either. So it's going to be Leona as the final pick. That's a huge amount of CC. That wombo combo, bullet time, requiem, solar flare, call of the forge god. Oof, that's devastating already from G2. I like to call it line damage. Um, if expect excuse me excel ever find themselves in a choke point the amount of damage that can just reach them at any point like you said if it's raining down from the sky if it's flying through your team in a bullet time or a uh, an orn oh, do it do it, do it do it do it yes 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 countered <laughs> what do you pick into orn bane bane uh, I've heard this floating around scrims for a while now. We will see where it actually gets locked. We do suspect that it's going to be the vein following the Orn around. Because uh, the thing about Orn mid is that he has a lot of really great matchups. He matches up really well into a lot of the mages that were being played, even the assassins, because again, he neutralizes that burst. He can itemize either the Sunfire or the Abyssal Mask to counter them out. Um, but he has a lot of struggling bruiser matchups, and Vayne is one of those champions, not a bruiser, but when you throw her up into the top lane, uh, she ignores your resistances and she just tries to shred you down, so <laughs> eyes on Mickey to make this vein count. <laughs> he has been popping off. Remember his performance on LeBlanc versus Fnatic made a highlight play there. We'll see if Excel can do it, because a lot of the time we've said in the past, when you draft against G2, what do you have to be able to do? Surprise them. And I'm pretty sure this vein will have at least given them cause to think. G2 with very much a wombo combo, very much an everyone press R composition. XL looking for the outplays, looking to sidestep to dodge around with that vein, harass G2 down, and then get the chase going. Yeah, that dreaded moment though when G2 do decide to pull the trigger and press R, it feels like there's always a timer when a Karthus is on the game, but we will see what Mickey can do. That we will, that we will. What Kadro can do in the early game as well. See if he can shut down Iankos and uh, keep XL in this game, in the early game. Because if they fall behind, you feel that this is G2's game to lose. Lots of chants, lots of cheers here. XL fans in the house. I can't quite hear them, of course. Can you? Can you hear them? Very quiet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well done. I applaud you. That was good. <laughs> the one G2 fan in the audience just shouted by themselves. Okay, let's start with G2. This is going to be hard. They're very loud. Wait. I think we wait. They're taking turns though. That's yeah, it's polite. Oh, that's the British. When you politeness. chant, you have to be polite. You let the opposing team chant, and then you remind them why they are so much worse than you, and you're going to beat them. Okay. I do want to talk about the fact that we did finally get an Orn mid. Um, we've been seeing explode globally, and I expect to continue to see it be a staple the rest of the day, as well as the LEC. Um, it's really hard to focus, actually. <laughs> there we go. We got to it in the end. I give up. <laughs> So right, we'll have plenty of time to talk about Orn. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. The politeness they have hushed for us for skewing. Talk to me about Orn mid. The unsealed spellbook is being taken this time around and into the resolve. What I think is interesting is that Perks actually opted into the um, minion dematerializer, which we haven't seen a lot of Orns actually reach for. So it tells me that he's potentially looking for a W Max or at least wants to contest uh, some of this initial wave push and not lose control here. But very early on, you can already see that Mickey is being very aggressive uh, and trying to force him out of this lane. You could even see Mickey pulling that next wave of minions up to try and get them all to focus fire one of the red minions to try and clear out as much, as many of these minions as possible before perks can get any CS. And ranged matchups can be really devastating for Orn. Now, uh, one of the cool things about Orn mid is just the flexibility and the skills that he can max. So Nemesis in melee matchups, and I think also in one ranged matchup, has actually been maxing his E, his charge, and he uses it to wave clear and kind of the, um, the setup and the escape tool, especially if he's against a lot of CC. Uh, Nuke Duck in a ranged matchup maxed the Q, 
queue, but a lot of orns in solo queue max the W. So there's so much versatility about what you want to do. I expect perks here. Um, I know we kind of talked about that if you have the minion G materializer, you really want to contest push that maybe you go for a W max. But against Vayne, if he's feeling really bad, he might have to max the Q just to try to snipe out CS. They're drunk, I don't know. Hey, <laughs> Kendrill is on fire. G2 are terrified, I believe, is the chant. They're all over the board with the chants right now. It's allowed, it's allowed. You can chant as much as you want. Perks down to half HP in the mid lane. Has the Doran shield and the refillable potion. What you usually do on all when you know you're going to get harassed down. You can see him popping through those potions, trying to clear out the wave. Now, Yankos already level four. Farming up a storm, 24 farm to 12 on the side of Kadron. Yeah, Ender already did a great breakdown of Karthus and how we tend to think about Karthus as only being a late game champion, but he's actually strong at multiple stages in the game, especially in isolated uh, skirmishes. And his level four gank potential, because he gets access to wall, is actually really strong, which he's going to show here, not necessarily to set up a kill gank, but um, simply to give perks some space here for a nice reset. Perks will be able to back, has the teleport on the unsealed spellbook, so it can get back into the lane, but Yankos the, the difficulty with Karthus is if you don't shut him down early on, that first Requiem can really be game-changing because you think you're winning a fight, you think you're getting ahead in a lane, and then Requiem comes down, you get half your health, well, not half your health, like a quarter of your health just chunked out, and it becomes a very different affair. Wonder has harassed Expect down in the top lane, but Expect has a pot, has a Dorvan shield, will be able to heal that up in just a moment's time. I think one of the nice things about Karthus, especially with kind of the recent, I'm going to say, buffs into the jungle. Oh, hold it, though. Expect Haymaker in the direction he thought Wonder was going. <laughs> we'll call it that. Um, but that ward actually did spot Yankos coming into this lane. Uh, Karthus' ability to move very quickly through the jungle and then maximize the fact that you have more uptime on your camps and now that there's more golden experience into the camps while also then simultaneously being able to participate in ganks post-level 6 with a global ultimate, I think it's just like the ultimate best of every world. Um, which is why I think that we'll continue to see his priority rise again, not just globally with things like the Orn mid, um, but in the LEC specifically. You should get used to seeing a lot of Karthus. And it used to be that you had to have pushing waves to keep Karthus protected, but it feels like if you thin that jungle champion pool, he gets to just do as he pleases. Seems to be the case so far this game. Kato went back, got the Predators, going to try and protect his jungle. Did manage to steal away one Razor Beat camp, but that should be back by the time Yankos gets around to it. And that's one of the benefits of the uh, quicker respawn timers in the jungle. Karthus, as you say, if you got counter jungled in the past, you'd fall behind quite quickly. But here, doesn't really matter, because he can just go do his top side, and then by the time he's finished, go down towards a bot once again. Maybe even look up towards the top lane, as Kadrill is just around the corner here. Could get a gank off on Wonder. Perks just hit level 6 in the mid lane. So we talked about how it was really important that Perks would be contesting for um, push by taking the demon, uh, minion D materializer. Now that he has that, uh, one of the perks about Orn mid is his ability to rotate very quickly top or mid, which is exactly what we're seeing right now. Perks is coming up behind Yankos here, and they're really putting the pressure on Excel's top side of the map. Good timing from Kadra there. Knew that Yankos could be on the top side, so arrived in the lane and kept Expect safe. I did also peek in on what ability Perks is matching in the matchup. I'll hold it there. Stun's going to land here in the bottom lane as Mickey goes in. Patrick takes about half his health. They're going to trade back. The root lands on Caps. Not going to be able to do too much more. Teleport used in the top lane as Expect joins the fray once again. But Yankos has just hit six. And Expect now has no TP and no ward and no Wall safety as Wonder goes in. The Wall of Pain connects. Expect dodging away from the Skittles. He uses the Flash. But that is a summoner down, and the wave is in not a good position for him at all. And this is going to be a very easy repeat maneuver, um, not just for Yankos, but kind of the next time that Perks ever does find himself with the ability or the space to roam. Expect has a massive target on his back, so we're going to see how carefully he plays this, and maybe if this forces Cajal to play in his back pocket. Oh, Mickey knocked up the ignite, ticking Mickey. There's the Requiem. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sweet Prince. Fast blood to Yankos. And like you said, Medic, you have to be so aware when Karthus is in the game. You can't ever fall behind that 25%. And uh, to answer the question about what Perks was maxing, it's Q. So taking into the range matchup, um, putting extra points into that Q to help him farm from afar and uh, not take so much damage from Bane. Felt a little bit greedy there from Mickey. Did have the flash, did have the heal. We'll see. He steps just a millimeter too far forward as the Spire comes up, takes a tower shot, Gets knocked up, ignited, and after this, there's no escape. Yeah, it feels like the unfortunate mistake was really the tower shot coming down. This didn't even need the Ornhorn. Yankos gets a Dark Harvest stack. 
building up on those early on. Uh, the mid lane matchup is still going in Mickey's favor in the pure 1v1. It's about 10 CS up or so, and he's getting that little bit of an advantage. When he gets the Blade of the Ruin King, it will be harder for perks to lane into him. But now with G2 taking the dragon, they're actually going to push in towards the jungle of Excel. No Specs trying to trade here. No flash. Does have the showstopper. Mickey takes a lot of damage. Showstopper could be the end of Mickey, but Expect decides he doesn't want to go any further for it. There's a control ward in that bush, and three members of G2 will force Expect back. And Cap's using his ultimate to make sure that um, Mickey and Yanko's got a very quick and easy out to approach this tower. Now, it is being traded for the Herald that Excel have the numbers advantage over, as well as the mid priority and mid lane, because as you said, Mickey is still winning this mid lane matchup despite falling down to Karthus. I guess one of the benefits of having 280 carries that can build Blade of the Ruin King is if XL can get in an even position in the mid game, you are going to be able to shred through things like perks. You'll shred through Wonder as well and through Mickey on the Leona because you have all of that extra health damage. But right now, XL setting up for a mid lane play. Karthus, quarter of the time left on the Requiem. Expect's going to keep him busy for the moment. Cap still pushing in the bottom lane. G2 able to defend their mid lane as Wonder came down. I think it actually makes Kajal's responsibility in this composition really important as the Gragas, um, because like you're saying, when you have two ADCs, you really just want to create enough time for them to continuously hit their opponent and whittle them down, which is why the disengage from um, Gragas cask is going to be really vital here with as much engage that G2 have. Well, Patrick having the cleanse as well will help with some of that self-disengage. Expect will act as a bouncer. He's been used to the pits. He'll try and get in the way of G2 when the fights do begin. But for now, Excel are going to take the first turret of the game as the Riftail charges in. And with it, they have about a thousand gold lead. That'll be evened relatively soon if G2 are able to get back down towards that bottom lane. Mickey caught up here once again. He still has flash, he still has heal. He'll use one, he'll use both. Perks trying to lock him up and the chase is on. Perks tanking it up. Uh -huh. Yankos with the Skittles. Taste the rainbow, Mickey. Yeah, Yankos uh, is just now about to have his ultimate up there, so you could see Mickey in the panic, immediately burning the heal, thinking that the Requiem was going to be up, but in the end, uh, didn't play respectful enough and is punished. They don't even need the Karthus ultimate that is just now available to finish off that kill, and that's twice now that Mickey has overreached and rightfully been punished by G2. Definitely feels like he needs to be burning these summoners earlier, because you can see, it's not that difficult of a setup. All it is, is a searing charge into the Wall of Pain. To be fair, that is a not fun hitbox. Sure. <laughs> but is it a hitbox? You should know. Especially when you're playing Vayne, you have things like the tumble. Mickey trying to dodge out at the end, but Yanko's able to connect with those lay wastes. And I think that deceptively large damage was the Orn Q on top of a Skittle. And not just the Orn Q. I'd have to get another look at it. Well, for now, that combo is working out well. Perks on his way to a Sunfire Cape. Actually looks like he's going Barmy Cinders, maybe. Help with his push, because remember, it's really about getting the push priority in the yeah. lane, so you can look for those rotations. I'm trying to wonder what that Sapphire Crystal is for. Could just be for extra mana in lane, could be to spam out spells, could go up towards a Glacial Shroud later on as well. Uh, I think it'll be... <laughs> Nicely done, Expect. Obviously, former G2 member, yep. so some... Um, what's the word? Camaraderie? Camaraderie? Camaraderie. Some words are really difficult for me to say. I mess up a lot of them, I'll be honest. But <laughs> you were close enough on that one that will give you the benefit of the doubt. I was going to say, it could also just be the start of the Abyssal Mask if he does yeah. go Iceborne or go for the Abyssal Mask. I'm just uh, debating Iceborne, if you want Abyssal Mask in this game. I think Iceborne feels good because yeah. you are against two ADCs, um, even though... Oh, oh, Caps! Chain of Call, that's beautiful. Caps goes golden, but they should be able to take him down. There's the dredge line, there's the kill. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Perks is getting knocked back. Perks is going to fall as well. Excel! Strike twice on two sides of the map, and Yanko's flashing forward with the wall of Turn pain. it around! Mickey's going to try and turn it around. He's got the tumbles, he's got the dodges, but can he get away? No, he can't, Frost. No, he can't. Flash from Expect away from Mickey as he flashed forward with the Zenith Blade. And in the end, ends up being a one for two in favor of Excel. Excel saw their moment. They tried to take it. Unfortunately, Mickey does fall in the end, but Patrick has been the big winner in kind of these cross map skirmishes because he's getting so much free time on these towers and these minion waves. This Ferris is actually having a lot of gold funneled into him, and you can see it starting to open up in the CSs. Pugs is going. That's a Patrick detail. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Not more to be said about that one, I'm afraid. That was a Jesus take the wheel moment. <laughs> At least Hands didn't off. Get packs and assist, I guess. <laughs> Small mercies. Mickey's around the mid lane as Caps has come towards it. And as you say, Patrick has had some gold funneled into him. He's now finished the Blade of the Ruin King. Mickey's still sitting on parts. 
So I just wanted to compliment um, Tori. I was hoping that we would get the replay to time the dredge line. I believe he timed it exactly yep. perfectly Perfect. out of the stasis, which I mean, can be hard to do. Caps was sitting on the uh, on the flash, so if he wasn't perfect, Caps could have survived this potentially. Let's so get another look at it. Here we go. Caps goes golden, and Torre right on time with the dredge line. You could could have looked for the uh, auto attack there as he comes out of the stopwatch, but that's always a little bit tricky. I just think the animation yep, of the auto flash, yeah, the auto coming down. It was right to go for the hook. I agree with you. Mickey tries to do what he can, but there's only only so many times you can tumble, and then Patrick's like, oh, it's fine, I'll clear the no wave. No observers, the cut the place. tape. And then the TP comes in for... So Perks is respawned by this time. Okay, so what the observers are showing us is that... Patrick was playing for plates. Yeah. <laughs> and that was greedy. And Perks gets... Uh, Jankos gets another kill. Three and one now on the cart. Has finished the Sorcerer's Shoes. Got the Runic Echoes. 109 CS compared to 85, and he's 1,500 gold ahead. But in the mid lane, there's a 200 gold difference, so I guess that makes up for it. Now, so let's talk about bot lane. 1,400 gold to lead for Patrick. Okay. So that's where the, the imbalance is between these two teams. Here's my issue Okay. with uh, with bot lane. We talked about kind of like execution of team fights, have responsibilities on Kadrill. If he can keep his two ADCs alive, it feels good. The problem is, is that Jankos is really fed right now, and there's nothing Kadrill can do to protect his two ADCs from the uh, ultimate that is absolutely going to destroy them when he presses R. Caps? It was an accident. Uh, no, 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 no. Patrick flashed <laughs> Chain of Corruption. No, I know. Okay. But Caps threw bullet time backwards. Oh, I didn't see that. I just saw the flash. It's I okay. Was... We'll forget. Yeah. It was an accident. Caps, Caps appeared for just a second. Um, one day in the mid lane as no, well. No, observers. <laughs> this is cool. That maybe he... Very close to get the Torre going in. Here's the call. The Forge God comes out. Torre locked up. The Forge God comes back. And even with the showstopper, they can't save Torre. Now expect on the front line. He's dead as well. And G2... They found the answer in the mid lane. It was Excel who engaged, but G2 come out on top. And now they're going to just muscle their way over into the second spawn of the Rift Herald is Wonder. He needs to be careful. Obviously, if he goes over that wall, that's a free condemn. Jankos now has 11 pages in his death note. He is looking pretty darn destructive. I'm going to say that um, in his death note, Excel is written and... Yeah. Each, uh, each player can have a whole page to themselves right now, and you've still got six pages to, to spare. They get the Rift Herald. I actually just need to see him press R, because I want to see how much base damage it will do to Mickey and Patrick right now. If the crowd shouts really loudly at Jankos to press, press R, it might work. That wasn't really loud. Come on, guys, you tried. You tried. <laughs> it was a valiant effort. He does also have noise-canceling headphones on, which would probably obscure whatever they were saying. Just hear a rumbling through his earpieces. Okay, 15 minutes in, well, almost 16 now, even in gold, but G2 have double dragons, Infernal and Cloud. You've got Jankos, who has a Rift Herald and 11 stacks on his Magi's. It, it feels like G2 are in control of the game. And fights are really scary for Excel. I think um, right now they're pretty dependent. Like, it has to be an unfair fight, because um, if everyone 5v5 is stacked up, again, I think the Karthus just can win it at this point in the game. Um, and I don't necessarily see that getting much better. But if you can use either an expect on a side lane with set maybe, or maybe you find a pick that you can sweep someone out of position with Kadril's cast, so no longer using it defensively to reset a fight, but offensively to find your moment, then maybe there's wiggle room right there for Excel. But we are kind of approaching critical mass for panic mode, in my opinion, for Excel. I think a fair fight is just really terrifying for them. Right, here we go. Mickey jumping in. There's the solar flare, but Torre goes golden. Jankos on his way. Torre, or flash, stretch line, gets himself out. Patrick with the chain of corruption lands. Call of the Forge God only connects on the tail end, and now Rift Herald has popped in the mid lane. Exo won't be able to defend this. This is at least going to get the first tower you have to feel, and we'll see if it gets any more. Caps will be there to help it shepherd it on its way. And Mickey is down in the bottom lane. Expect is up in the top as XL try and play a little bit of a 1-3-1. And it's because XL recognized that not only did they lose the fight there because Tori took so much damage, but again, they can't fight a fair fight, so... Oh. That was unfortunate. Oh, Mickey's fighting against Wonder in the bottom lane. Wonder was the one to go in. There's the Requiem. Let's see how much it does. Mickey also low already, but he's still training. He's Ooh. dodging. That was so fine, Mickey. Okay, hold on. Set is reaching around right now. He's looking for the deep flank. They don't have cast, so yeah, I think this puts chat. a damper on it. 
This is just about pressuring G2 so Mickey gets a bit more time. Without the cask, it would mean that Expect is entirely reliant on the Flash and the ultimate, but that is exactly what Excel fans needed. They needed a miracle play from their mid laner, Mickey, right there, to not only survive the Karthus ultimate, but then to take down the fight. And you should start to see this from Excel for probably the next 10 minutes, that they're going to be splitting up the map. It's going to be playing a hit and run League of Legends uh, of sitting in either a 1-4 or a 1-3-1 position. With Ocean Dragon spawning in five seconds, you can see Yankos is already well on his way there. Karthus can solo it at this point in the game. Pretty easy for him to do. He's going down towards bottom lane to start it off to help Perks get that minion wave up. XL will try and get some river control if they can, but they're going to go the long way around. This tower will fall. It will be three for two in favor of G2. And now we'll see with the cask almost back up, with Chain of Corruption almost back up. Will XL keep fighting around it? Solar Flare doesn't connect, but the Zenith Blade does. Flash away from Kadro, but the chase is on. Kadro goes golden. This fight is going to restart here. Death Charge coming out. Expect in with the face breaker, but it's all on Patrick. It's all on Mickey. Mickey's already on the back line. G2, Mickey still alive. Expect's going to take him out with a showstopper. Torway chased off. Wonder on Patrick, but the dredge line connects. And now it's all on Patrick trying to do what he can. But he doesn't have flash, he doesn't have clients, and he doesn't have open hell to get out of this one. He tries to take down Wonder, but the double comes in. G2 rip XL to pieces in the jungle. And they did it without the Karthus ultimate. Oh, Mickey, 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 Mickey. Oh, Perks, he flashes. Yankos is there. Perks is going to die. Mickey, can you trade? No, you can't. And that's now 19 stacks in the death note. So what I was saying is that Yankos' ultimate uh, hasn't come off of cooldown right now. So you had a... a we're gonna say a window where Excel are like, the Requiem's probably not up. Let's stick our heads into this Drake fight, see if we can maybe fight a pick, because this is kind of the one window where if we do group up and five is five, we're not gonna get absolutely blasted by Karthus ultimate. Um, the issue is, is that they still lost the fight pretty handedly with some consolation prizes picked up on the very end, like set with his drive-by. And you feel like if uh, there had been a few more summoners available for XL, maybe they would have been able to expect uh, escape, sorry, and at the end here, Perks face plants into a wall. Now, Expect is actually getting chased out by Wonder as we watch this. Mickey dies, of course, and now Wonder and Expect are trading. Wonder still with the World Ender. No flash on Expect, no escape for him, really. Wonder on a killing spree, 5 1 and 1 on Aatrox. And that might be the nail in the coffin because we talked about how. Excel did the right thing, that they kind of found the one window where Requiem wasn't going to be available to try to look for a grouped up fight. Um, but once that ultimate is up and available, they want to play out into those side lanes. Yeah, it's still dangerous because you are still competing with that global uh, pressure. But now that Wonder is pretty handedly uh, winning in that side lane, means that they lose that extra win condition or option, I guess, is probably the more appropriate word. Yeah, it becomes very difficult for them. G2 clear out mid, now they come up towards the bottom lane. And we'll take this. It's the 3,000 gold lead. It's going to be about 4,000 when Wonder takes this turret alongside Caps. And it just look, getting harder and harder. Well, it's, yeah, 4,000. It's harder and harder for XL. They need those picks. They need those little 1v1s, those 2v2s if they can find them. But the Ankos is just so strong. Wonder is so strong. And Caps has been quietly scaling up as well. Yes, he's only on an Essence Reaver building up towards an Infinity Edge, but he will still do a lot of damage if that bullet time connects. I think he's just kind of like the tower pusher. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, come here, ADC. P push down the structure. Come here, ADC. L let's do the Baron. He's uh, just a walking stat bot. Yeah. He was the guy, that was the lane we were looking at and saying, well, XL have the advantage. Patrick was 1,500 gold ahead. Now, there's 300 gold between them, but 1,700 in favor of Wonder in the top lane. 2,300 in favor of Yankos in the jungle. So much gold sitting on G2, so many stats. So it's really suffocating right now yeah. for um, XL. They want to try to play side lanes. It's hard to do with Karthus, so we're going to have to uh, watch or keep our eye on the team to see how creative they get again about how they maybe want to try to get back into this game. I personally think at this point it's pretty cruise control for G2, um, but we have seen Mickey try to flex some of his outplay, but I feel like at this point it has to be a pretty massive outplay by Excel. Because if uh, if the formula stays true, um, G2 can start to walk through. Well, let's have a look at what we've got in terms of summoners for the next fight. Flash and Cleanser up on Patrick. Torre looking for the connection here. Torre's caught out. Not where he wants to be. He flashes over the wall. Chain of Corruption is going to connect, but there's the bullet time. Gargoyle Stoneplay will keep Torre alive. Good disengage. Yeah, cross is done. He's shut down. That's 10 stacks off. Supreme display of talent. Uh, sorry, not a showstopper used. Dear me, that was an entirely different champion. As XL trade one for one, Yankos was able to get the Requiem in after he died. 
Yeah, really important that Torre uh, managed to survive there and the fact that they got the kill off of Yankos and like you said, took away a lot of those stacks and a lot of that damage. So that is a, a bit of a sigh of relief for Excel. He's still at 11 stacks though. It's better than 19. That is true, that is true. We see Torre just steps in, thinks he's safe because expecting Patrick around the corner, misses the dredge line on Yankos. I mean, the key thing here is the fact that they do get Yankos in the end, so at least it, it's something there. Um, Expect just immediately turns around and follows up on the massive uh, cast damage that Cage will set up. Right. Oh, by the hair on his chinny chin chin. Ooh. Uh, it was very, very close. Expect does die at the end of it as he jumped in to try and disengage Mickey, but a one for one trade is what Excel would have been hoping for coming into that. They're 2,500 gold behind. Infinity Edge now complete on caps. Two Ginsu's Rage Blades, one on Mickey, one on Patrick. Oh, hello. Kedra realizes that uh, Wonder was fishing, trying to see if he could find a connection, because there's only 50 seconds left on that dragon. Yeah, and it's the uh, the sole point, and yep. that's the, the scary thing. Oh, it's going to be so hard to get through G2 if they have an ocean soul as well. Perks, Wonder, Mickey, all going to be unkillable, basically, and Yankos can just stand at the back. I mean, I'm going to say that I feel pretty calm. Oh, actually, they're pulling Mickey. I was going to say, I feel pretty confident that Excel were just going to give it up because Mickey was just hard pushing top lane, but they are starting to pull him, so... The final stand, if Excel get wiped here, it's obviously probably going to go into the Baron. If they lose big here, it's going to be the Drake. So this is uh, this is crisis mode. Sorry, backing. Not going to be spotted out, I don't think. Oh, do they know Wonders there? Do they know? Do they know? He slipped in. I know they haven't had vision on him recently. There goes. Oh, now he knows. That's uh, an unpleasant surprise to find waiting in your jungle. And meanwhile, the Drake is being taken by two members, so it is going to be the Dragon Soul for G2. There we go. All that regen, all that extra health and mana in these fights. It's going to be very, very hard now for XL to do anything about this G2 lineup. Ghost used by Perks. Switched over to the teleport, and the chase is on. Call of the Forge God coming out. Perks! Oh! Oh, one has been the gate shot off towards the side. Mickey trying to shred through him before anything can really begin. Perks coming in as well with the Ignite. Puts down the singing boy, but a good flash from Mickey. Wonder still on the chase. Cadle comes in. Mickey flashing forward with the solar flare. Caps is already on the killing spree as Torre dies, and here comes the Requiem. Oh, goodbye, Excel. They lose too quickly. And now Expect and Cadrill are running for their lives. Caps is on the chase. Make it rain and take it all the way to the bank. Caps. You're delaying the inevitable here, Cajun. <laughs> <laughs> the stun. Expect now trying to chase Caps in. Expect has the show, doesn't have the showstopper, does have the face breaker, trying to trade in as the Haymaker comes out. And Caps will chase him out. G2 win it in 4 for 1. And now we're knocking on the base of XL. Didn't even need the Orin ultimate. Not even close. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to style on your opponents. You do that by totally whiffing your ult somehow. But... He just, he really split the wickets. <laughs> yeah. He definitely did, he definitely did. G2 now, take the inhibitor down. Yankos is back up to 19 st stacks. Caps has a molten edge. There's an obsidian cleaver on Wonder. The gold is just rattling into G2's pocket. That is a lot of different ways to say that this is bad news bears. I'm saying it's pretty donezo. <laughs> The Dunzo Manifesto here for Excel. They are I miles mean, behind. You say that, but we keep saying that Excel would need kind of the miracle to turn these team fights, and they've been given some some uh, pretty interesting miracles. They've been given some opportunities. Yeah, he just mistimes it. It's a very small. <laughs> yeah, it's a very small projectile. Very <laughs> difficult to see. You can see Mickey. I actually want the perks like reaction cam. I just want to see what his reaction was to that moment. Uh, Mickey survives for so long here, but in the end, gets locked up with the solar flares. He tumbles into it. Torre dies towards the bottom side, as you can see. And when the Requiem comes out, look at those health bars just disappear. It's absurd. Yankos is so far ahead. And this is why we're starting to see Carthus jungle a lot more. He'll just take over a game. Now Mickey's looking for Mickey. Mickey on Mickey action. The tower's still here. Mickey goes in with the Zenith Blade, and down goes Mickey. I would say Mickey really won that. Yeah, Mickey definitely did. Wonder now trying to win the fight behind the turrets and the rest of G2 are on their way. Yankos comes in, Chain of Corruption lands. There's the knock back into the face breaker, but Wonder goes gold and pops the stopwatch. Here comes the rest of the chase. Yankos getting onto Patrick, work all the way around. Wonder's gonna fall for this, but they get the AD carry. That's the only target that can really get through Perks. And you can see, Perks doesn't care. Perks doesn't give a damn. They get the stun onto Yankos, but it's Perks who's tanking the tower and taking the damage for it. Yankos rooted in place, but that's another shutdown going to him. Oh, just laugh it up. You got Ocean Soul. You got a Sunfire, Bramble Vest, and Abyssal Mask perks. You can't hit your ults, but you can tank a tower down well. 
<laughs> uh, so it feels like G2 are playing with their food a little bit here. Um, they see the team fight. Obviously, they've been setting up for the Baron, but they know a free buffet when they find one, and it was open season underneath this tower. My favorite part is how we trade Wonder for Patrick here. This poor little Varus is just looking at his team, just like wombo, combi uh, wombo comboing this Aatrox, and then poor Patrick, that is the wrong party. It's so difficult for him, and G2 did a very good job of focus firing the AD carries, but Perks has taken four tower shots already. That's five. He's spending That's like an six. hour under these, this That's structure. That's seven. That's eight. That's nine. That's 10. <laughs> it's 11. That's right. They do more damage each time they hit you as well, just as a note. He takes about 13 tower shots before he walks out. I don't want to see damage... Uh, I want to see damage taken. Yeah, that's what I want yeah. to see. I want to see how much damage the tower did to Perks. Not that much. I'll be honest, but you can see Yankos fulfilling the Karthus dream this game, topping the damage shots in the fights and uh, stacking up his Medjai's, sitting at 25 stacks. He's got a full death note. He's written the novel and he's ready to send it to the publishers. Those are rookie numbers. He needs to pump them up. You can't. Whoosh. Here comes, oh, he hit the call of the force god this time, and there's the bullet time. We talked about the wombo combo, and that's the womboist of comboists you've ever seen. Wonder once again behind the tower with Requiem. Doesn't kill him. Does half of both the health, though. And uh, because of that, XL are forced out. Yep. That's all I got. Yeah. That's all XL have got as well. This is going to be the uh, top lane tower going down. The Baron power play so far has been three and a half thousand gold, and I don't think G2 want that to stop anytime soon. Now push in for the Nexus turrets. Perks tanking it up once again. Doesn't need to. There are minions here, but we'll see if a miracle could come. But I don't think it's going to happen here for XL. Face Baker doesn't hit. Tower goes down. Yanko stands between them all. The cast doesn't connect, and this will be it. G2. They're going to go for a fountain dive because they always do. But they're back to, oh, they didn't do it. Back to winning ways. Back to winning ways. Good game from G2. So, unfortunately, uh, with that type of composition, you are put on a clock. And really, unfortunately for Excel fans, is that G2 sped up that clock yep. pretty quickly by funneling so much early gold <laughs> and kills onto Yankos. G2! It was just very difficult for XL to do too much. You could see what they were thinking. The Vayne pick didn't quite work out. It did have lane presence, but Mickey ended with seven deaths. And as soon as the Karthus gets ahead, just press R before the fight even begins. I think uh, Patrick ended with both a QSS and Cleanse to try and get out of all the CC that was being layered on top of him. Of course, big hugs from um, Perks to expect there across the board. And a very well-deserved I think Yigus is going back for seconds on the high fives. Yeah, he definitely is. It's greedy. Just takes all the CS, takes all the kills, takes all the high fives. It's a bounce back week for G2. Yeah. And I think this was the expectation, right? I don't think anyone thought they'd come in here and perform perhaps as poorly as they did last week. Some people may have hoped, some people may have thought maybe we'll have new challenges at the top of the league, and we still do. But G2 just showed us they are still here to party. I think it's always that discussion about um, experimentation.